Now that we have power back, welcome back to some more Stormworks. I am Stormrunner Gaming, and today I am here with my latest boat in Stormworks. It is a, a very large tanker that I was building the other day on a live stream here on YouTube. I believe it was Monday when I was building it. But anyway, we have a pretty large tanker with the control room up in the front. We also do have a pretty large cargo bay in the middle of it, and 10 tanks on the back for... Um, I guess oil or fuel, whatever you need, even water if you want to transport that. We have to do a lot of the systems for the boat here, like the engines are not connected up and um, we have a lot of other electrical systems and controls to do. We also, I'm going to be adding in a helipad on the front here for um, helicopters of course and we need a very large door right here that um, seals of course. I might make one that um, opens like half of it going one way, half of it going the other way for this door, but that'll be something to see when we get there. So let's take it to the workshop here, and I'm going to start today by, let's build up that helipad here on the front and see what that looks like. I also want to clean up this a little bit because it does look a little bit weird to me at least. I don't know what I want to do with it. I might extend this out and give it some supports or something to make it look a bit better, but right now... I'm not sure exactly what I'm going to do with it. Let's get to building this. We are going to need our symmetry mode on here to be able to build this. And let's give it some feet here. Some decently strong feet, of course, because we are going to be landing helicopters on this thing. And a decently big landing pad on the front. I don't know exactly how big that is yet. I'm going to count it out real quick and I'll make it a perfect square here. Alright, there is our basic shape for the helicopter pad. It took me a little while to actually count out all the blocks there, but we're also going to be putting on some blinky lights on here, of course, so that they know where to land. And we could actually do RGB lights on here, get a little bit fancy. That's going to be a lot of lights to install here. I'm probably going to be putting in um, at least a small... Um, jet producing engine or excuse me an electric producing jet engine here like i've built on the voyager a the glass voyager a and there may be another boat out there but i can't remember which other ones that i have put the uh glass not the glass the electric producing jet engines on but now that we've got all of this done we're going to need a uh, rgb controller somewhere on here to be able to control all these lights here because when you are creating um using the new um rgb lights here you need to use a um composite value to control all the rgb lights on here but for now we're just going to leave them like that and we want to paint our big h for the helicopter pad on the front here Let's get that going. That looks pretty good so far. We left three blocks on the top there, leaving three at the bottom. Let's count. We got five right there. Maybe we'll make it a little bit smaller. Something like that. And we'll leave it. That looks a little bit weird. Let's give it two spaces on either side and color back in this right here. Now that looks pretty good. Actually, I do want to color in this now, because it would look a bit better. Yeah, like that. And then we'll make the rest of the helicopter pad. Let's just give it a good gray. It doesn't really matter what color we put on here. But I am interested. I'm not going to be painting the hull today. But I am interested to see what color you guys would like to see this boat to be. I was talking about it on the stream the other day, and a lot of people were saying or red or orange or it was a couple weird colors that I don't know if it would work too well especially with a tanker I mean I don't want to do it the same color red as we're going to be having the bottom down here like this color red I already did start that a little while ago but we haven't finished that up yet but now we've got our helipad done on the front and I'm going to be saving that up as our version 10 
All right, now that that is done, we're going to be moving on to the next thing we need to do here. I'm going to be creating the door for our cargo bay here. A lot of the components inside of the cargo bay are already done. You've got a um, an extra shelf in here for storage, of course, for smaller things. We've got the large bay down here. We've got a lot of doors as well as the, um, the office for the controller. And I'm going to have a... Um, a lot of gauges and stuff for the cargo bay as well as the um, oil containers back here being run through this one office here. That's going to be something I'm going to be setting up on a later date. So now we first need to get a few blocks in here just to be the interior part of the door. And we are actually going to have to make this a totally different entity so that it can move and pivot of course. Um, different from the actual um, the ship. So first off we are going to have to replace a few of these here with our robotic door hinge to enable this to work here. And we need that to be set up correctly like such. Alright now that we've got that hinge in there we want to run these blocks for our door to make a good seal on there around the edge of the door here. And we are going to be having this door flip on either sides, one side this way, one side that way. And I may add a second hinge depending on if the door is too heavy for one hinge. Although I don't know what the weight capacity of one of those is. Sounds like something for my lab down on base, but that's for another day. <laughs> Anyway, let's get this door done here. Once I find the correct rotation, we're going to be setting that up. And I'll take it out of symmetry and I'll let the, let's say this side take that one. And, oh, we need to build this side up as well. Let me turn on the X, Y again. And I'll let the other side have this one. So we're gonna have like the two sides joining together between each other. To bring that out to there and this one out to here and then we're gonna kind of have like the teeth between the two that come together and close the door oops one off right there oh I do have to switch this one to the other side actually let's take that one off and switch it to the other side to go with the pattern of the teeth here and now all we need to do is give the other door a little bit of teeth and then I'm going to set up some logic to open this door, of course, for the compartment here. And I'm thinking we can actually have this open down because we do have a big enough compartment. But the one downside of having it open down is that it does severely limit your cargo capacity due to it. So I'm actually going to have it open up and we're going to have the crane. I'm going to have a crane built into here from the crane and it's going to be controlled from the crane control chair right there. That's what this little glass um, uh, window here was built for. So that's going to be the crane operator there. And now we're going to go and get some logic to control these here. All we're going to need is some rotation targets so we can actually just use a throttle up here to open those cargo bay doors and I'm going to set the throttle up right next to our crane controller so that the person there has the ability to open and close these doors and now I'm gonna give those some temporary power I'm gonna set up a temporary battery up here and I'm gonna be using this um, a lot during the building process here to test out um, different mechanisms on the ship here so that I know they work properly so that when we put everything together with the um, circuit breakers and control board I know it's not the power that's the issue I know it's the power is the issue and not the actual mechanisms out here all right we are in our crane control seat and it looks like those doors are working perfectly as we want them to. They come together and close right there and come open when we need to load some cargo into the ship. So now that 
is done for our vest so we're gonna go and save our new tanker up as new tanker v11 here and i always do save new versions for new stuff so just in case i want to go back to a previous save where i didn't do something because i want to change it i can go back to that save but usually when i am done creating something i will delete all the saves that i don't need and um it'll save a lot of safe uh, space of course on my hard drive Let's see how that looks. That's not looking horrible. It still kind of looks meh, but in general, I think it looks a little bit better. If you guys have any ideas, of course, to make this control room look a lot better, if you have any pictures of real life tankers or something, leave a comment down below so I can make that look a little bit better, probably in the next episode here. But the next system I'm going to be setting up here is the actual pump in and out system for our tanks here and I'm going to be setting up this little um, control thing right here that tells us the fluid level and everything of our tanks here. We're also going to need two fluid ports to go in and out as well as some large fuel pumps here. Which well, is fluid pumps, not fuel pumps, but we're also going to get a couple of dials here as well to tell us some um, information about what is going on within those tanks from the outside of it as well. And I'm going to be setting up a um, like a kill switch for the valves as well. So let's get. I'm also going to need a lot of piping to get this done here today get our three types of piping and we're going to need that toggle button to set that up we're also going to need the fluid meter down here to tell us how much fluid we are actually getting in each one of those tanks so I'm going to go around and replace the bottom middle of these tanks with a fluid meter so we know on each tanks how much fluid we are holding and this is going to be information that's going to be sent to probably three different parts of the ship here it's going to be sent to the little console outside of each tank for um engineers to look at it's also going to be sent to that management office in the um the cargo bay and it's going to be sent up to the bridge but the bridge is not going to be as primary as a use it's just to tell probably like the captain or whatever that we are filling up we'll probably use a wall back here and we may put in or we're going to put in like radar and stuff on here as well later on but now that we've got Now that we've got that done, we need to set up the console here for controlling all of this. And we're going to have a dial for the fluid meter in there, as well as a flow rate in and out of it here. So we're going to get a fluid flow meter here, or whatever it's called exactly. Just need to find out what it is. fluid pressure sensor that's what I was looking for so let's grab that and I'm not gonna do any of the piping right now but let's at least set up these little control things right next to it and we are going to center them in the middle there so we're gonna get it five blocks off the each side of our tanks here and put our dial in there so now that we've got all of that done Let's complete it for the other tanks here. And we can also go and give it a little... We can connect it up to the fluid meter back there so we don't have to do that in a later episode or a later time here. And we have one more console to build here. And now we are done with all of those little consoles. And now we do need to name every single one of these. And I don't actually know how much fuel each one of these canisters or one of these um, these like big tanks are going to hold. So let's just call this tank um, fluid level. Give it a min value of zero and a max value. Let's say a hundred thousand. Let's call that. We're also going to need a fluid spawn. The last thing we're going to be doing today is we're going to see how much 
each one of these tanks can actually hold. Alright, it looks like we got 32,046.88, um, I believe, liters of fuel. I don't know exactly what measurement we have here, but it should be liters, I believe. I could be totally wrong on that, don't take my word for it, but yeah. So we're going to be walking all the way up through the ship here again. And yeah, I do want to go and change that number. So we had 32,000 on the dial there. I'm just going to make the max here 33,000. 33,000. And that will be it. I'm going to go change the rest of these off of camera. But yeah, that'll be it for today's build series. So if you guys are liking this, of course, um, tell me what you are thinking about it down in the comments below. Of course, if you have any suggestions for the boat, of course, leave a comment down below as well. Especially on this control room. Please help me. I don't know what in the world I want to do with this, but this looks so derpy still. It's, like a, it's a big wall at the moment. So if you guys like this, please leave a like and consider subscribing to the channel to stay up with this Stormworks build series and more to come on the channel. But I've never been granted goodbyes, my people need me, and I need to go.